Also hier der KL möchte in Uganda auch ein Ökoprojekt, ein ähnliches zu unterstützen. And there are so many organizations that are trying to come up with the alternative open pollinated seeds. Yeah. So the government has a lot of restrictions, but uh, yeah. there is an underground projects that are exchanging seeds. Mm -hmm. And most of the trainings always uh, there is a note come with the energy seed to exchange. So this is how underground movement are working to develop alternative seeds. But you need to do it in the underground to, to get the seeds. Yeah, otherwise the big companies, yeah. they, they have a monopoly of the GMO. Yeah. Yes. And they will never want you to, they want you to depend on them. Yeah. So, so it's mandatory officially to buy it? So it's mandatory to only use the seed, not yeah. the alternative. Also, so man darf yeah. keine... The results of our research. In fact, our, also it's schwierig. Our, Unmanipuliertes Saatgut, was abseits der großen Multis ist, zu bekommen und zu verteilen und zu nutzen. For seeds, if you buy seeds from them, it's already genetically modified. Das ist fast immer genetisch verändert. Not, but I, I, I do it. Ich auch nicht wirklich. Haha. And uh, what about um, what about teaching people? We had uh, big problems because the people can't read and can't write. Mm. So, um, what about in your country? You're in Kenya. Yes. 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 Kenya. Yeah. What about in Kenya? Uh, how is the education there? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it depends. Also, deeply in the countryside, people have the same thing. Okay. Of not reading and writing. Yeah. But uh, there's a way how to, to work with them in, uh, in, in the way they could understand about these uh, situations. So, like something like farming is not only about reading and writing, it's just about how we can work. Already also they have local technical knowledge, the traditional knowledge is there. Mm -hmm. Just so how to, we can activate the old knowledge, mm -hmm. which is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it's important to write and to read because of uh, you want to make an uh, exchange of information so you can learn the old yeah, knowledge, but you can uh, yeah you can make it with a new knowledge and you can combine it. And that, that's why I, for me it's important that the people can read or write so we can take new and old ideas and make something new maybe. Uh, but I don't know. I'm not from there. Okay. I have a big mouth now, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not from there. So uh, I yeah, have more to listen. What you said in the beginning was um, the most important is to show the people what what's possible, mm -hmm. and that's what uh, he did. Like he started in small places, and yeah. then from a small land, like he mm -hmm. grew for food. Like when I looked there, there was like nothing, and then I see okay, everything is actually growing there. Mm -hmm. They kept the water, and then people see that it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example video or something like that from what you're doing or teaching or for something like that? Yeah, we, we have an account on YouTube. There are several, several yes. Okay. Videos that you have and seen. I just did one. <laughs> yeah, I have some videos on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Um, how much money do you need? You say it's twenty thousand euro uh, you need for starting something like that for so it's, the water project. For the water project, only for the water project. Okay. Can you um, can you build up houses with garbage or something like that, or how much does a house building costs in this land? So you can make some, I don't know, schools or something like that, but alternative. In an alternative way. Do you understand my question? How much yeah. it can cost to build an alternative house? Yes. I mean, I mean, it also depends with a lot of survey, what available raw materials that are available there, yeah. so that you can integrate it. And uh, how is the situation where you want to build? Like the place we wanted to build is was at the beginning it looked swampy, so we spent a lot of money on the foundation only. 
there are some factors to consider before you mm. can really afford cost. Ist sehr matschig, es ist natürlich teurer, like allein die, das Fundament zu bauen. Kommt auf die Situation an, wie teuer das Bauen ist. In the beginning we had a big problem with the government, but after they saw how many people are involved with our project now, now we are really good relationship. Okay. And uh, the, now the Kenyan government is a decentralized system. So working with the local government is easy because they know us personally. And uh, sometimes they call us, come, we want to give you some farm inputs. You know? And uh, some still don't understand. They give us fertilizer, say no. And then <laughs> they also give us farm tools. That's what we take. Mm -hmm. But also we under, we tell them why we don't take the fertilizer, yeah, chemical wow. fertilizer. Yeah. Um, chemical Kunstdünger. Fertilizer. Yeah, so we just tell them how organic we use things. Yeah. yeah. But we have a good relationship at the moment. What about the rich people in Uganda is uh, dangerous, they told me, I don't know. They told me it's dangerous to ask other people for help because if they are rich, and they see, okay, there's an alternative project and they may take my money away. So they, they told me it's dangerous and they can kill them and I don't know. Is something like that there or is it just a story? story mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think, uh, not sure. Okay. I'm not confident on that. <laughs> so, I mean, for us, we just have to collaborate with everybody. Yeah, of course. Um, for us, like the person who sold us the big land where we are building now the school, is a rich person. And he's a person who will never want to sell land because he has money. But it's only by building relationship that he can sell you. You know what you want to do there. What do you want to do? And then you say you want to build a school for sustainability. And that's why he decided to sell. But he doesn't need money. So it's about how you approach them. We want to approach everybody. It's not about the government or politician, but how to work together and collaborate with them. So they're open-minded and you don't have trouble with the people who live there? I mean, uh, our idea is to have a peaceful solution. We don't have a trouble with them. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody who can have a trouble with the government and we we now have a, a good relationship, mm -hmm. okay. and also maybe in the future we don't know how they could. They have money, maybe they can support our projects. So this is well, how we want to involve them. The only problem is the politicians. You know, so if they see the project is becoming successful, they want to attach themselves to the project and say, "I work also with them, so you can give me votes because we have brought this project here." <laughs> so how? How to develop this line that mm -hmm. we, as, we, we work together, but everybody has to, to have a boundary when it comes to work. In this way, maybe we have some strategic ideas because that is what we do here, and that's uh, maybe we can help you to have some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great that you met, meet. <laughs> meet and greet and connect so thank you for coming how much do you need this year to for the next steps of your project so for for us like i said priority is the water project mm -hmm. that's uh, twenty thousand euros and for our educational 000. program that we want to do we want to do uh, permaculture training and it will be attached with the mushroom trade, mushroom ah, project. So, mm -hmm. Pilzzucht. It's around 50,000 euro. 50,000? Yeah. Oh, big uh, project also for commercial? No, this commercial? is about training. Training, about okay. Teaching people. So that they can help themselves yes. and, and make a living from their little gardens. Ah, or... oh, great. And are you in connection with Google? 
Mm -hmm. So it's it's a big uh, foundation um, drilling holes, and there are uh, soccer players drilling same stones from Hamburg. So mm -hmm. you have toilet mm -hmm. paper, and you even have bottled water now, and they're quite much in the mm -hmm. water business, but in a supportive way. A friend of mine is friend with them, so I don't know if I can. I met the founder in but Hamburg you, yes, three yes. years ago. And, uh, how, how is he called or the organization? Viva Con Agua. Hmm? Viva Con Agua. Viva Con Aqua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I met the founder in Hamburg and we had a lunch together. And um, at that time they told me they they want to focus more in Uganda. They were building a water projects there. And also they had a pilgrimage on that time. So also they invited me, but I could not make it for four weeks. And so he just told me now they are focused more on Uganda. But if something changed, you can tell me. <laughs> Football, some powder. How long will you stay here? I leave. I leave on Tuesday morning. Also, glaubt, I in Germany I will leave on the 23rd of October. Mm -hmm. Ah, bleibt bis Oktober. Shall you receive um, guests at the moment or do you have guests? Könnt ihn gern noch unterstützen und werben für yeah, seine this season is always on Vorträge und November when we Seminare. To April. Mm -hmm. So, so, so a season where where Danke für jede Hilfe, jedes Weiterleiten. Ein großartiger Held der Permakultur. Community Building.